everyone. Happy Wednesday. We are here today on Chung Chat to talk about hair. Here to talk about hair loss. So statistically, about 40% of women by the age of 40 will be complaining about hair loss. And it starts even earlier for men by the age of 35. 40% of men will start noticing hair thinning. So we know that with COVID and quarantine, all the stress that has added to people waking up and saying, oh my God, I'm losing my hair in the shower or on my pillow. That's hair shedding, usually from stress or other metabolic or uh, psychological stressors. So what do we do here for hair loss? Well, so we look at your scalp, make sure we try to look at the types of hair loss. Do you have scarring? What's the pattern of your hair loss? We like to look at your insides, check your blood work to see what's going on with your um, your nutrient uh, levels because we know your body is going to feed your body first and the hair last. It's sort of the last thing that your body is going to care about. So we look at your levels, your thyroid hormone, your vitamin D, your zinc, your B vitamins, your iron stores, um, your stress levels. Um, so we like to make sure that your insides are as healthy as they can be to start to grow new hair back because what we do interventionally is to either put you on prescriptions, topicals, we laser you, we do injectables to try to stimulate some hair follicles to come back and grow. So there's many different types of hair loss, but the biggest one we see is hormonal hair thinning. What happens is the effect of the androgens, the testosterones in your scalp, they cause the follicle to shrink. So you start to see the shaft, the diameter of your hair is actually going to start to thin itself. The follicle will shrink and over time you'll just lose that follicle. So you just have a shiny bald head. So what do we do for that? Well, number one, we work on your hormones. So men, you know, their uh, testosterone in females, as we lose our estrogen, the actual levels of testosterone get higher that our body is sensing. So finasteride or Propecia is a very common uh, prescription that we put either men, both men and women on. Um, it is safe. Uh, females also put them on something called spironolactone, which is a different type of androgen receptor blocker. Um, that's prescription stuff. And then topical wise, we have a lot of fun things we do. So we have compounds of Rogaine Minoxidil with finasteride, retin-A to help with penetration. Um, females, we have something called progesterone, which is a female hormone that we like for smooth muscle relaxation, but it does seem to help with hair growth. We know that when you're pregnant, women grow hair a lot faster. That's the effect of progesterone on the hair follicle. Um, there is a really cool new uh, peptide therapy that we use. It's uh, it's PDT, uh, PDT peptide with valproic acid. Basically, this works in the Wnt beta catenin pathway, whatever that means, helps with um, growing the hair, helps the follicles. So we call this hair rescue activate because it helps your hair grow. Um, these are all topicals that we like to use. On, on non-prescription supplement wise, um, we like Viviscal, we like Mitrofol, those have a lot of clinical studies behind them. So Viviscal came out first and what that is, it's marine collagen plus prosinin. So what this does, it helps prolong the growth phase of your hair cycle. This is called antigen. So hair has a couple, has three different cycles, the growth phase, the resting phase, and the shedding phase. So what we try to do is prolong that growth phase so that you will have more growth. Uh, the Nutrafol, we carry the men's and the women's. So basically helps with the hormones. So these are things like salt pump metal, things that help to block the androgens, and also adaptogens. So adaptogens are botanicals that help with your body's stress and how your body modulates. So the communication between your adrenal glands and your thyroid. So the adaptogens help with the stress that your body senses. Um, so Nutrafol helps with the, uh, the adaptogens, the hormones, and then helps has a little bit of um, the nutrients that help your hair grow, because again, your, hair, your body's gonna worry about the hair at last. Latisse we love for eyelashes, and yes, you can use it on your scalp too, but that's a little tiny bottle. Um, it's kind of you know fun to, a lot of my patients put on their eyebrows or eyelashes, you little bits of, bits of hair loss. Um, so what we do beyond prescriptions and pills and topicals, we like to do either lasers to grow hair, same way that how we use lasers to kill off hair that we don't want, that little bit of sustained trauma to the hair follicles that actually stimulate some hair growth. So uh, we do what we call hair laser scalp hair restore, that's the technical term of the laser treatment that we do. It's a series of treatments, we do them every two to three weeks apart, depending on how many we do, it depends on how bad your hair is. Most people do a series of four to six, um, and the idea is it's a gentle heating of the hair follicles to cause some rejuvenation, regeneration, um, no downtime, no pain. Um, the other things that we do that are a little bit more sensitive would be injections, things like uh, PRP injections. Um, PRP has about eight identified growth factors, a little bit pro-inflammatory, so we've graduated from PRP to things like amniotic membrane allograft, which has 280 more growth factors. Uh, or things like stem cells, exosomes are sort of the most you know potent out there. And we think these stem cells live in your circulation for about 90 days, but they have a lot of activity for that time to turn on a lot of um, 
pathways to regenerate the hair follicles. So uh, that's actually pretty popular. We think on we you know PRP we just recommend a series, maybe a series of three or six, depending on how bad your hair was. Most of my patients say maybe one round of stem cells might be enough to sustain, and you know might see it maybe once a year. It all depends on your baseline health and what other um, you know topicals or pills you're taking at the same time. So that was a lot of information we threw at you, but hair loss is real. Uh, we know that stress is real too, and it plays a huge role in our hair metabolism. So if you have questions, you know, come for consultation. Basically, we like to look at the type of hair loss you're having, look at your blood work, and then we figure out the best plan of action for you. So thanks for tuning in, and hope to see you soon.